Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsblog.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create bar plots in the R programming language. So in the video I'm going to use some example data that we can create here in line 2 of the code. So if you run this code you will see that a new data object appears here at the top right and this data object is simply containing five numeric values which are representing the height of our bars. Now, if we want to draw a bar plot in the R programming language, then we can use the bar plot function, as you can see here in line 5 of the code. The bar plot function is already provided by the basic installation of the R programming language, so we don't need to install any packages for the function. And we can apply the function simply by specifying our values within the bar plot function. So if you run this line of code, you can see that here at the bottom right of our studio, a new bar plot appears with five different bars. Now you can also see that this bar plot here is relatively plain and simple. So for that reason, I will show you in the following examples how to modify this bar plot and how to make this bar plot a little bit prettier. So the first thing I want to show you here in example two is how to add colors to the bar plot. And uh, this is something we can do with a call argument uh, that you can see here in line nine of the code. And for the call argument, we can specify uh, basically any hex color code, or there are also predefined colors that you can use in R. So in this case, I'm using the, this hex color code here. And uh, if you run this line of code, you can see that now our bars are colored in blue. So in the next example, I want to show you how to create a horizontal bar plot. And uh, this is something we can specify, as you can see here in line 13 of the code, by specifying the Horace argument to be equal to true. And if you run these lines of code, you can see that now our bar plot is represented with horizontal alignment. You may already have noticed that our bar plots that we have created so far don't have any labels uh, for the bars. And this, of course, makes it very difficult for the reader to interpret this bar plot, as you can see it right now. And for that reason, it makes a lot of sense to create another vector which is containing our labels of the bar plot. So here in this case, uh, as you can see in line 16 of the code, I'm simply creating uh, labels from A to E. And uh, now if you want to draw these labels below the bars of our bar plot, we can specify the names arg argument, as you can see here in line 18 of the code, to be equal to this vector which contains our labels of the box. So if we run line 17 and 18 of the code, you can see that now below our bars, uh, we can see our labels A, B, C, D, and E. So another thing I want to show you is how to create a stacked bar chart. And this is what we are going to do here in, li in lines uh, 20 onwards in example five of the code. And uh, if we want to create a stacked bar chart, we need to create a matrix, as you can see here in lines uh, 21 to 26 of the code. And this matrix needs, contain, needs to contain columns, which are specifying each value of each subgroup for the stacked bar chart. So let's run this code, and then we can have a look uh, at this data, how this data should look like. So uh, after running line 27 of the code, you can see that our matrix appears here at the bottom of RStudio in the RStudio console. And you can see that we have created a matrix with five columns, A, B, C, D, and E. And each of this co these columns contains two rows. One row for group one and another row for group two. And uh, now we can simply specify within our bar plot this matrix as input. And uh, then it also makes a lot of sense to specify two colors because uh, now we have two rows. So we would need two different colors for our stacked bar plot. Now, if you run these lines of code, 
you can see that our stacked bar plot is already created here at the bottom right. Um, however, we don't have a legend yet, and of course it makes a lot of sense to add a legend to such a stacked bar plot, because otherwise the reader will not know which of the colors is representing which group. Yeah, and that is something we can do here in lines 32 to 34 of the code um, by applying the legend function. And within the legend function, we have to specify at which position we want to draw our legend. So in this case, I want to draw it at the top right. Then we need to specify the labels or the names of our legend. In this case, group one and group two. And then we also want to specify um, for which color, uh, which group or which label stands. So in this case, group one is shown with uh, this color code and group two is shown with this color code. So if you run these three lines of code, you will see that a legend appears here at the top right of our bar plot. Yeah, so another thing I want to show you is relatively similar compared to a stacked bar plot, and this is a grouped bar plot. And uh, this is what we are going to do here in the next example, in example six, starting at line 36 of the code. And um, here in this case, we are doing exactly the same as in the previous example, but we are specifying the beside argument to be equal to true. And if we do that, then you can see that now the bars are stacked above each other, but they are represented side by side in groups for each of the categories that we have. And uh, also here, of course, it makes a lot of sense to add a legend to the plot. So here we can simply apply the same code as we did already in example five. And then you can see a legend representing our groups is appearing at the top right of our bar plot. Okay, so far we have only used the bar plot function of the basic installation of the R programming language. But as you might know, the R programming language is providing many different packages for the creation of plots. And uh, the most popular package for the creation of plots is the ggplot2 package. And in the following example, I'm going to show you how to create a bar plot with the ggplot2 package. So as first step, we need to install and load this add-on package to our RStudio. And that is uh, what we can do here in line 46 and 47 of the code. I have installed the ggplot2 package already, so I'm just going to load it here with line 47. And after running this code, we also need to specify a data frame which contains all our values and groups because the ggplot2 package only takes data frames as input. So this is what we are going to do here in line 49 of the code. We can also have a look at this data. And uh, here at the bottom in the RStudio console, you can see that the data simply contains our group variable that we have created in the beginning as well as the value variable that we have created in the beginning. So now, um, after creating this data set, we can run the ggplot function, as you can see here in line 51 of the code, plus the geom bar function. And uh, this function here actually is specifying that we are creating a bar plot based on our data. So if you run these two lines of code, then you can see a new bar plot is appearing here at the bottom right, and this bar plot is containing the same values as before. But this time the bar plot is shown in this typical ggplot2 design that you may have already seen before. Yeah, so another package that is also very well known for the creation of bar plots is the plotly package that I want to show you here in example eight of the code. Again, we can install and load the package here with the install packages and the library functions. Um, I have installed this package too, so um, I'm just going to load it here in line 56 of the code. And then within the plotly package, the plotly function is included. 
and we can apply the plot ly function as you can see here in lines 58 to 60 of the code. So within the function we need to specify our group. Um, this is the grouping vari variable that we have created in the beginning. Then we need to specify our values and then we also need to specify that we want to create a bar chart and this is something we can do by specifying the type argument to be equal to bar. So if you run these three lines of code, you will see that a new bar chart appears here at the bottom right. And what you also can see is that this bar chart is created in the viewer window and not in the plot window as before. So this has some pros but also cons. So, for example, if you would like to export your data, you would have to do it a little bit differently. So, I think it's also a bit a matter of taste, which package or which function you prefer for the creation of bar plots. However, as you have seen in this video, there are many alternatives for the creation of bar charts in the R programming language. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to show you in this video. However, if you would like to learn more about the creation of bar graphics in the R programming language, then you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage I have recently published a tutorial on the creation of bar charts. And in this tutorial I'm explaining the R code of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial in the description of this video so you could check it out there. Also, you will find all the R code that I have used in this video in the description of this video, so you could copy paste it from there. And if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to get notifications about videos that I'm releasing in future. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye bye.